record. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to a book creator webinar. My name is Ben Sangroth, uh, and I'm happy to be here with you guys uh, talking about creativity uh, and creativity specifically in the Chromebook classroom. Uh, although, while this says creativity in the Chromebook classroom, we are certainly not, you know, hammering home just the Chromebook. A lot of these tools that we're going to talk about today and Book Creator also work on other devices like the iPad. So if you, you know, have any preconceived notion that it's like, oh, this maybe only works on the iPad. No, a lot of stuff works on the iPad too. So device, a little bit device agnostic, but the main point of today is, um, you know, making sure that we get across how we can encourage creativity on the Chromebook. So uh, I'm going to drop in the chat for you all a link to some Google Slides, and there's going to be a couple of links in there that are going to be important. Uh, so I will do that now. So that link right there will get you to my Google Slideshow, and I'm going to share my screen with you all as well. And actually, I'm going to redo that, do it with sound so that way can hear me if needed. Okay. All right. So um, I see lots of you jumping in. So that's awesome. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and present and we'll kick this thing off. All right. So uh, yeah, so like I said, the, the title of this webinar is going to be uh, Ignite Creativity in the Chromebook Classroom with Book Creators. So when I was working with uh, Dan Kemp uh, from Book Creator on some different webinar topics, uh, one of the things that I, I wanted to highlight was how you can leverage Book Creator as it not the end all be all creation tool. Because we all know inside of schools, we're using different tools, we're using different ways that we want to engage our students. And while Book Creator is an amazing uh, creativity tool in and of itself, there's a lot of things out there that we can then use and have our students create with. But the main purpose of that is that we want to use Book Creator as kind of the focal point of those projects. So what we're looking at today is how can we leverage Book Creator uh, in conjunction with lots of other creativity tools. So um, that's what we're looking at today. So again, the slides are in there. Uh, hopefully you guys can have them. There's actually going to be a link that I'm going to show you in a little bit that might be even a little bit more important uh, to have. Well, there's two I think that are more important that we're going to talk about uh, as well. Uh, so first off, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Ben Sangroth. Uh, I live in Dixon, Illinois. So uh, I'm out here in the Midwest uh, in the United States. Uh, I work for uh, the Learning Technology Center of Illinois. So the LTC, uh, we are a statewide organization that works with uh, schools and districts in, in Illinois on all things educational technology and my role there is as a regional education technology coordinator uh, which I actually am the lead regional education technology coordinator I just remembered that's my new title uh, as of a couple days ago so uh, that's exciting um, I get to to work with all the schools and districts in northwest Illinois so I have about 148 uh, school districts that I can support directly, but you know our work often transitions across the entire state. So it's a really cool organization, very happy to be a part of it. Um, and you can see there's my contact information on there. So if you have any questions uh, following up uh, today, I'm happy to answer them. You can reach out to me on Twitter, uh, at Mr. Underscore Sangroth, uh, or shoot me an email. Uh, my email's right there on the screen as well. Um, I tried to change up the fun fact. Uh, this time I was a former college baseball player. Actually just broke out my uh, catcher's mitt because I have to, as we were talking all golf uh, before this, before everybody logged in, uh, my background's actually baseball. I love the sport. I can't wait for it to hopefully come back here in a couple of weeks. And uh, I broke the catcher's mitt out because I get to go give a lesson to another college, to a college catcher uh, tomorrow after work. So getting a little bit back in the baseball groove tomorrow. So lots of fun stuff. So um, like I said, uh, my, my background is actually that of a high school history teacher. Okay. So I, I, before I got into the ed tech world, I was a high school history teacher. Um, I started teaching with book creator uh, back in 2012. I actually looked that up the last webinar I did to see how long ago that I had downloaded the book creator app on the iPad originally. Uh, so I've been using Book Creator for around eight years now. Uh, if any of you are social studies teachers, uh, we have a webinar coming up next week. Uh, so look back on the Book Creator page to register for that one on how to use uh, a Book Creator in the social studies classroom. I'm super pumped about that one because uh, that's right in my wheelhouse. That was my background and everything like that. So, um, and when I was teaching, uh, you know, the high school kids and I was teaching history, one of the things that really occurred to me was that 
when we used creative tools at that time with the iPad, because the Chromebook wasn't even invented yet, uh, it was really a game changer in how our kid, my kids interacted with my content and history. So I wanted to then kind of a, a see how far I could take that. And when the Chromebook came out, you know, one of the main knocks against it was the iPad was the creative device in schools. And the Chromebook was this thing that you could use Google Drive on, you could use as a word processor, and you could do, you know, any number of like traditional computing tasks on it, but you were using it on the web. And I remember being with EdTech Teacher, that was the company I was with prior to, to joining the LTC. And uh, Google actually involved us in some discussion about how can we promote some of these creativity tools that are available uh, on the web and in conjunction with the Chromebook. And that's what actually sparked this whole conversation that we're having today of where are these tools at? What can they do? But then more importantly, uh, since the Book Creator was announced for Chrome in 2017, how can we leverage Book Creator for Chrome to kind of make all these tools fit together and give us an awesome place to display them? So I'll start off today with this like thought provoking question. Hopefully it provokes some thought, but why is it important to inspire creativity in your classroom? You know, this is, this is one thing that, that, you know, when I saw this and when I work with teachers, you know, getting kids to, to be creative with content was just so much more fun. Okay. And that kind of goes to my next slide here of, of, you know, we were making things that were relevant to them. And what we're going to see in this, uh, you know, what I'm going to show you today is not only can we make, you know, our kids authors with book creator and have them be able to publish you know, awesome pieces of, of work, we can now turn them into podcasters. We can turn them into graphics creators. We can turn them into web designers, all with tools that are available from a couple of clicks on a Chromebook. And what we do with those then is we're having our kids make relevant uh, and creative content with what we're teaching. So it becomes more, or it becomes more of what can I produce as opposed to what can I recall? And so that's where we wanna look at how can we make relevant content? How can our content become relevant to our students? How can our students create then relevant content? So that's kind of our framework uh, for today. And the other thing that we look at is how can we leverage technology to go from consumption style learning to creation style learning? So my mindset with this was, I'm gonna stop as a history teacher just lecturing. I'm going to, uh, you know, stop going through and just making everything boring, you know, and standing at the front of the room and talking the whole time and giving out multiple choice tests. I'm going to now ask my kids to make sure that they are engaged in my content and they're the creators of that content. So that's kind of what we're looking at here is, you know, what can we do? How can we uh, make sure that uh, you know, our kids are actively engaged. So give me one second. I'm going to do a task real quick. There she is. Oh, done. All right. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at is how can we, you know, turn our kids into these awesome creative machines uh, and what tools are available out there to do that. Uh, so I wrote a book about that and Book Creator was awesome enough to publish uh, this book for me. I can't thank them enough. Uh, I remember sitting down with, with Dan at FETC last year when we could actually, you know, be with people um, and specifically people from even other countries, you know, uh, and actually see each other in person. And it was, it was fun. I showed him what I had made and what I had written and what I compiled. And then he, he offered to generously take that stuff and revamp it and have a, a graphic designer go through it and reorganize it for it. So this is my book, uh, Ignite Creativity in Your Chromebook Classroom. It's going to be the basis for what we're going to kind of talk about today. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put this bitly uh, into that. Uh, the chat. So that way, if you guys are interested, I, you know, it is actually one of the more proud things that I've, uh, that I've ever done. So um, you guys are, you know, hopefully have access to that now you can read through it. Um, it is it is really cool and, and something that I'm, I'm super proud of. And what we're looking at with the book is that concept of what my goal was, was how what tools are out there, what tools are available that we can inspire our students to be creative. And so the book is not just a, hey, here's 10 different tools, but my goal is actually to create not just tools, uh, a tools resource, but then lesson ideas. So you can see as we kind of flip through this, 
Um, one of the things that we do is we go into some detail, I go into some detail, but then every tool ends up with how might you use this with your students, okay? And so that's one of the really powerful, impactful points that I wanted to hammer home because I know as a teacher, uh, sitting in sessions, listening to people talk about, hey, 50 tools for creativity. It's like, that's great, but how do I actually practically apply those things? Like, what are some ways that I can use those with my students? Uh, and so the book's goal is to give you a little bit of background about that tool, what you can do with it, but then also give you just five or six quick lesson ideas. So you might have your kids, so example for book creator here. Okay, when we're using book creator in the classroom, it's more than just, I know I put on there, write books. Like that's obviously like something we can do with book creator. But one of the things that we can also do is we can create digital learning artifacts. We can uh, make collaborative books. We can create science journals that kids can document their resources. Uh, we're gonna really focus today on creating a digital archive, uh, you know, of different types of content that then can be shared with the world, okay? That's what we're looking at. And that's why, you know, Book Creator is an amazing tool. And then if you look at through here, uh, you can also see that uh, we're you know, clicking through, we've got lots of other tools that we're gonna kind of flip through and kind of look at. And, and I framework this book into being like in four parts. So it was authors, voice, image, video. Okay, so authors for Book Creator, voice using Soundtrap and Vocaroo, uh, to produce voice, um, you know, and have kids actually verbalize their learning, and then image creation with Adobe Spark and Google Drawings, and then video creation with Flipgrid, Screencastify, uh, Adobe Spark Video, and then also uh, WeVideo. So there's lots of tools that are out there. It's all about you guys finding what works for you, and then how you can leverage them with their students. Uh, the last thing I'll do before I kind of get into kind of some of the nuts and bolts of what this looks like when you actually combine these things with, we vid or with Book Creator is every time you hear a new tool, uh, it looks cool. Like you're going to see this, some of the stuff you might be like, that looks awesome. But what you're looking at is, you know, how, what you should be looking at is what lesson does this fit in with my curriculum? Like how can I make my learning better for my students with this particular tool? because not every tool is a one size fits all. They may look cool and the production value might be there, but at the end result, did it meet your learning objectives? And that's the really important point to always keep in mind. So for example, when we get to voice, I have Soundtrap and I have Vocaroo. Now, or you can also just use Book Creator for this too, because you can record your voice in Book Creator. So what are you end, end gaming with this? If you just want your kids to record their voice and have a simple recording, Vocaroo might be for you because it's just a one-stop shop, click a big red button and record your voice. But if you want them to read text and have that text displayed, and then they're reading over top of that text, then maybe recording, inserting that text into a book in Book Creator, recording voice in Book Creator, and then having that artifact there, that might be your play. But if your objective is, I want my kids to engage with, with their voice uh, in a super creative way where they're, you know, they're adding in different elements and they're actually recording a podcast or they're recording a song or a rap or something. Then you're going to want to look at something like Soundtrap because those objectives are going to be met with a tool that's more powerful for recording voice like Soundtrap. So just some things to keep in mind as we kind of go along throughout the course of uh, our time that we have together today, which is about 45 more minutes. So uh, back to the slides here quickly. Um, on slide seven, so I shared the slides earlier. Uh, I will kind of repost them in just in case somebody just, anybody just joined. On slide seven, I have a link here uh, to a, 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 a EPUB file. So this is actually a, what I'm calling like my Ignite Creativity workbook, okay? Uh, so it's a book that I, I put together and I often use it when I teach this workshop actually and in person when, you know, back when we could do things in person together. Uh, and I have it as my digital artifact for this, for this type of a workshop. So I wanted to give it to you guys. It might not be something you actually like follow along with today, but it is something that I wanted to, to provide in case you wanted to look at it later. So what you can do with this is you can download this. So you can click on this link here. It's gonna take you uh, to kind of a blank page and it's gonna tell you that there's no preview available because it's a Google Drive file. But if you download it, it'll download as an EPUB. 
And then you're going to want to go into your book creator account. Okay. So if I go into book creator and I can, in this case, I've got my own library set up for today, but I could go into my, my books library and then I will upload this book by going to import book. And then I would, since I downloaded it, I can upload it from my computer, or in this case, since it's already downloaded, I can just drag and drop it in. And now you guys have my Ignite Creativity workbook that would kind of, that kind of corresponds with the stuff that we're gonna look at today, okay? So you can see here it is, you open it up and you have full editing rights to uh, my book, you know, my workbook that I made that corresponds with today's uh, workshop or webinar. So that's there, that's on slide, uh, seven. So, you know, go ahead, use it, take advantage of it. It's also a good way to kind of play with some of the things that I'm talking about. Maybe the processes, if you're unfamiliar with book creator and you're new to it, I suggest taking one of, you know, signing up for one of John's webinars uh, that he does that kind of walks you through some of these things. Uh, because what we're looking at here is how can we take these outside things and bring them into book creator? Okay. Yeah, you're all very welcome. Absolutely. Um, yeah, happy to, uh, happy to provide. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually jump into my library that I made for today and open up my book. So we're going to go ahead and edit into my workbook here. And the first thing I'll say is we're going to look at graphic creation later with Adobe Spark. And I made the book cover inside of Adobe Spark. So this is actually just an image that I actually created inside of Adobe Spark and then made the size of the image, the exact size of my workbook. So when I downloaded the image from Adobe Spark, it fit perfectly as the cover of my book. So I could really like move this over and you can see nothing's there uh, behind it. So I didn't have to create this, you know, like take a lot of time to move text boxes around and, and do all that stuff. I, I manipulated it all inside of Adobe and then brought it into my book and it's just perfectly sized. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But when we're looking at our different options here, so these are kind of a rundown of some of the tools that I wanted to go over because I find this collection of tools to be some of the most powerful creative tools that exist on, on this good old internet that we get to work with. And as you can see inside of the workbook here, I've created kind of a fun little, you know, creativity workbook for book creator, okay? So you can see first up, Screencastify, we're gonna kind of start, it's not quite the order of my book. Um, it's, it's a little bit out of order, but that's okay. I didn't wanna present something that you guys could just read later. Um, but I wanna kind of start with the video component, uh, mainly because I think it's timely, uh, you know, inside of this COVID-19 situation that the entire world's dealing with. I know here in Illinois, our schools are getting ramped up, getting ready to hopefully go back to in-person instruction. At the same time, there's a lot of schools throughout the country that are going to start out in a remote learning situation again and having their kids at home or some sort of hybrid uh, situation. So creating a, an archive for videos and things like that and creating video can be super helpful in those types of hybrid learning environments. So the first three tools all kind of focus in on that video creation component, both for you, the teacher, but then also the student. Okay. So the first one is Screencastify. So I'm going to go through these I'm not gonna go into really great detail about what each one of them, how they work or anything like that. What we're really looking at is how can we create a product with it and then use Book Creator to house those for our kids. So for example, Screencastify. What Screencastify is, is it is a, uh, a screen recording tool. So Screencastify allows you to record whatever's on your screen, create a video of that, and then you can export that video and send it off to your students. Or what you could also do is, create that video with Screencastify, download it, and then upload it into your book in Book Creator. So as an example, I wanna give you all instructions on how to use this workbook. So I'm gonna go back to this first page. I'm going to go up to my Screencastify extension. Screencastify is an extension. And if you aren't sure how to get to it, it's actually linked in my slides. So in the slide, there's a Screencastify slide link to screencastify.com. You can click on it, you can get it, okay? But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna record my screen. 
but maybe I want to provide instructions to my students on what I want them to do on each book of their digital archive that they're making in Book Creator. So I'm going to record, I like to record my desktop. Um, in this case, I could actually get away with my browser tab if I wanted to, uh, but for our purposes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make sure my microphone is turned on and then I hit record. Share the right screen. Hi everybody, welcome to the Ignite Creativity in Your Chromebook Classroom workshop. Uh, this is gonna be your workshop archive for the day. So as you can see, if you go up to the Pages tab here, you're gonna now notice that we've got all the different tools that we're gonna talk about. What I'd like you to do is advance through the different pages and I'd like you to see what you know, each page is asking you to do. So in the case of Screencastify, you're going to record a video and then I want you to upload uh, that video into your workbook in, uh, inside of Book Creator, okay? So the next page, you're gonna look at Flipgrid. So when we look at Flipgrid, you can actually export your videos that you make or that your students make in Flipgrid. And then you could upload those videos into your book in Book Creator. So that's what I'm gonna have you do here. The next page is WeVideo. It's kind of a catch-all. It does everything for you as far as video creation. So create a video project inside of WeVideo and bring that into your book. All right, you guys kind of get the idea. I'm gonna end the thing now. So I would keep going on and on with that, but you can see now I've got my video here. Uh, it's you know a screen recording of what I was just talking about. So now my, my people can, uh, can look at that and my students can watch that. So I'm gonna rename it. And then I can put it into Google Drive, that's great, but for our purposes, quickly, I'm gonna just hit download and then I'm gonna export it as an MP4. It just talks better to everything. So we're gonna go ahead and export it. It only takes just a couple of minutes to, or you know, less than a minute to, to get this thing and that was only a one minute long video. So you know, hopefully it'll go pretty quick. Uh, but one of the things that is nice about Screencastify is you can connect it to your Google Classroom. So you can make these screen recordings and share them to Google Classroom if you wanted to. I was hoping this would go a little bit faster, but of course, you know, internet and everything. Um, so we'll let that process and then we'll come back to it in a little bit, but uh, it should be done pretty soon. All right, so we're gonna go back here and we're gonna look at our next thing because we're gonna be able to kind of show you how to, it's kind of the same process for all these next three slides of like downloading a video and importing it in. Uh, I just wanna make sure everybody's aware of these awesome tools and how you can combine them in with Book Creator. So as an example, we're gonna look at Flipgrid. So hopefully, uh, I wonder if how many people are familiar with Flipgrid. Uh, this is another great tool for remote learning. It is a awesome tool to kind of encourage uh, social emotional uh, connections with your kids. And you know you want to make sure you have those connections when your kids aren't maybe in class with you every day. Uh, it's also a good way to maybe get to know your students right off the bat. Uh, if you you know are going to start the year away from each other. Okay, there we go. We got it exported, downloaded it. All right. So okay, so that went quick. We're going to put Flipgrid on hold. We're going to go back over here to our book. We're going to go back to Screencastify, and again. Two ways to get, there's a couple of ways you can get your video into Book Creator. Uh, we can go up to the plus sign and go to media. Oh, of course, Marcy, they will upgrade and their logo will look different. And that means all of my slides will have to be changed because that's just what always likes to happen. Um, good to know. Uh, you know, I wasn't anticipating something like that from somebody. So um, Adobe Spark just updated too, but they don't have their logo fully on all their materials yet. Um, okay, so we're going to bring our video in. We're going to go to import files and then we can look for, I'm on a Mac, so my downloads come up. I can find it and hit open. And this is how we're going to bring in uh, videos into our book. So what I like about this, and I guess, you know, this really isn't something that would go in the Screencastify page if I was going to do this as an assignment, right? Like I would put this maybe on the title page for my kids to be able to to watch before the, the assignment inside of Book Creator went off. So basically I'm giving them the instructions at the start of the project, telling them what to do on each slide, and I'm using Screencastify and bringing it into Book Creator. Here it is, you can see it. I can kind of shrink it down, put it into its appropriate spot. And then when I go to see my book and what it looks like when it gets published out, 
Hi everybody, welcome to the Ignite Creativity in Your Chromebook Classroom workshop. Uh, this is gonna be your workshop. You can watch me give the instructions for uh, that particular activity. The other thing your kids can do with Screencastify is they have the ability to make their own videos. So maybe they get done with their book and they want to create a video of it. They can want to create a video of them reading it or they want to, you know, maybe uh, one of the things that we talk about like with the science journal piece is they need to record a video explaining like order of operations or things like that. Anything they need to explain that's on their screen, they can record and then put into their book. So I think the main point here is you can put videos that you make with other tools into your book and then when you publish them out, they're able to be seen by everybody, which I think is super fun uh, when you're talking about bringing different things together. Uh, so I really like Screencastify for expressing student thought and, and, and um, you know, expressing and demonstrating what they know, think, feel, and understand about topics. Uh, Flipgrid, um, as Marcy just said, is going to update apparently, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, but what Flipgrid is, and you can see this is one of my grids that I made for professional development uh, with the North Boone schools. Oh, nobody responded to that one, so that is a bad one. Let's look at, yeah, people did. How come that didn't show up? Oh, I think I hit all of them. That's why. Oops. So let's go into this one. This one was kind of fun. Uh, this was right when uh, SpaceX was actually launching um, their uh, the rocket, so uh, it got delayed. So this is when Bob and Doug were going up from the United States. I know we've got people from outside of the United States here, so I want to make sure. Uh, SpaceX was launching their first rocket with men on the rocket up to the International Space Station. Uh, so I wanted to have people respond to me about what it was like, you know, be like on space travel or what were they excited about. So um, what Flipgrid does is it allows you to look at uh, the grid and then all the different responses that people have. So this is great for having students connect on work. It's great for having kids talk to each other, you know, through video, post their thoughts. There are thousands of ways that you can leverage this. But the one that I wanted to think about was how can you then leverage Flipgrid and Book Creator together? Well, we want to maybe archive those videos. Okay, so students do have the ability when they post a video when they get through the posting process or they get through the video creation process, they have the option to download their video. So as a student, you can go through the post, they record their video, what they want to say about the prompt that the teacher put in. And then when they get to the end, they can hit a button that says download. Um, inside of the book, we actually talk about this. So let's go back to the table of contents. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. So there's a couple of ways you can look at it. They can edit videos together. And then when they're done, they can hit the download button. I guess it's in the video there. It's not an image. I thought I had a picture of it in there, but apparently I don't. Um, but you can download that video and then the kids can upload it into their book. As an educator, if I have some students that are like, they made outstanding videos. Um, I can take and I can download those myself as well. So I can go into, these are all of my student videos. I say, you know what, Mary's was just awesome. I wanna create an archive of that. I can go in, actions, download the video. And it just quickly downloads it. This would be a really fun way. Um, I saw somebody posted a uh, idea of, or somebody said they put a, they made a yearbook in Book Creator you could take that idea of like kids can post like a farewell message or my favorite memory in Flipgrid. They could post that in Flipgrid and then you could download all of their videos individually and then open up your book and then pull that book, that video in. And now you've got like their Flipgrid response and also their video inside of uh, book creator. So you can see, I'm sure Mary's thrilled that I'm putting her on blast with this, but <laughs> you know, you could put her video in and then you can make kind of that yearbook, but you could also make it, uh, you know, interactive with Flipgrid and you can bring those responses together. Uh, another fun thing you can do with Flipgrid is they have what's called mixtapes. So you can make a mix of all the different videos that are in one grid. So your kids have an outstanding discussion on something in Flipgrid. You can add and create what's called a mixtape. And those mixtapes, it sounds just like, you know, you think it does. If I click on this one here, it mixes 
these three videos together into one particular video. So when you share it here, you can hit play. Oops. And it just brings hey, this is Nancy all the from... videos together. And what I could see doing is downloading the mixtape and then putting the mixtape into the book. So you kind of created that highlight reel without having to know any video editing skills. So something fun to, to kind of think about, you know, as, as ways that you can use it, okay? All right, so Flipgrid is amazing for that. And then also I think, you know, being able to save and, and archive those videos inside of, uh, and I'm gonna delete uh, Mary from here because I, I feel bad that we kept her on the screen for so long. Uh, and, and, harv and archive them inside of a book in Book Creator, I think is just super helpful for that. Um, you know, that's, that's what I'm looking for there. Um, so I'm seeing a question, uh, they could, so the, the kids can download them. Absolutely. They could, they could download the video themselves. Uh, the question is, uh, can the kids save a copy to their desktop or flash drive? Absolutely. They could have it. The one thing that happens with that though, is it gets cluttered, right? So like they download a whole bunch of videos, but they're all just kind of sitting there in separate files. So what you could do is you could create an archive in book creator where after every Flipgrid response for every topic that you do, you could download it, put it into a new page in Book Creator. Download the next one from week two, put it into a new page in Book Creator. And then when you get done, you have a whole digital archive of all the different videos that they made in Book Creator throughout the year. That's where I think, you know, it, it really could be a lot of fun to, to do. So, um, so yeah, that's what, that's what we're looking at with, with that option, okay? All right. Uh, John just jumped off, so I, 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 almost, I talked too long. He wasn't able to stay for the, uh, for the one with WeVideo. Uh, WeVideo is, uh, it, it is truly an amazing video creation tool. This is if you've used iMovie before or any video editing software, uh, this, is what, this is that on steroids for Chrome. Okay, so um, if you're looking at how to create and edit video using uh, the Chrome web browser, WeVideo is the way to go. Um, it is really, it is really great um, and, and a lot of fun. Okay. So uh, when you're looking at it here, I've actually got this video that I kind of put together of all these different clips uh, from my trip to Aaron Hills, which is uh, a golf course in um, Aaron, Wisconsin. And I was able to grab these photos and videos and put them all together and then edit them together inside of one particular video. So you can see. <laughs> So I put the videos in, the pictures in, combine them all, put audio in the background. Um, I see Elizabeth uh, putting a shout out in there for making book trailers, 100%. Um, if you look at all the different things that you can do with this, they have preloaded uh, text formats. Um, they have preloaded audio that you can use. So like that music in the background, I didn't have to download it from anywhere. It's one of their free tracks that you can just add in. So your kids don't have to go out searching, potentially breaking copyright, you know, all those things that you might be concerned about. Uh, they're all there adding in the transitions and then also the backgrounds. And if you have the full version, they have a green screen option. So you can bring green screening to your Chromebook classroom too, which is super fun. So um, it's pretty cool. It's, it's really an elaborate video editor when it's in this mode. But one thing I want to point out is that if you teach elementary kids and you're like, that looks a little advanced, uh, WeVideo allows for you to switch to what's called storyboard mode. And storyboard mode looks a lot different, doesn't it? You look at this and it's just kind of these little images that are in here and then you can just drag and drop and move them around. So it is much less intimidating for beginning video editors to use and to create with uh, than what the timeline mode is. And it's not as elaborate, but it is you know, an awesome way to get kids started on the video editing process. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to timeline and you can see kind of the differences there. And I think it messed up my video going back and forth, but that's okay because I downloaded it already. Uh, you can see I exported this earlier. We're going to discard those changes so that way it doesn't do it. Uh, and here's my video project. And when I click on it, I have the ability to go up and download that. 
So I did that a little bit earlier. It's just like kind of one of those infomercials where like they open up the, the uh, oven and the thing's already cooked, right? Um, I've got it downloaded and I want to bring this into my book. I'm just going to go into my folder here, find my video, drag and drop it into the book. And now I have my video that I made with Wii Video. So one of the things I saw come up in the questions of, can you make a video inside of Book Creator? Like, well, the answer is, yeah. Now, can you do it like elaborately where you're, you know, editing it and splicing it and music in the background? Not quite, but you can certainly do video recording directly in your book. It's actually one of the things that I love about Book Creator is that you can have your kids record, say like a reflection of themselves talking about something directly into their book in Book Creator. So while we're on the topic of video, I'll go ahead and answer and show that question. Here you can see this is my video. Perfect, drop it in, super fun, can resize it, put it wherever on the page it belongs. Now maybe I wanna record myself talking about that video or talking about the process of Wii Video. I'm gonna go into Book Creator, hit the plus sign, go to media, and then choose camera. And when I choose the camera, I have the option to either take a photo of myself or record a video. So I'm gonna click record video, counts me down. So while all these tools are great, if your end goal is to just record a simple, hey, I'm talking about something video, this is the way to do it. So you can just go to the plus sign up there in the top corner, choose uh, media, choose camera, and then video, and now we're recording our video. I hit stop, use it, and there it is. So you don't have to worry about downloading it, uploading it, or anything like that. So certainly an app, like probably the best for quick video creation is to do that. You just lose some of that collaboration piece that you would get with like a Flipgrid, um, the screen recording that you get with Screencastify, and then the editing piece that you get with Wii Video. So that's why I like to show all three or all four in this case. So. Um, so that kind of sums up our, or culminates our video component, I guess, except for Spark Video that we're going to get to hopefully in a little bit, but man, I am running out of time. I also just heard my three-year-old get home. I might get Zoom bombed by a three-year-old. We'll see. Usually my wife's pretty good at corralling him and keeping him upstairs, but he's cute. So um, we're there, uh, you know. All right. So as we continue on our journey here, uh, I'm gonna kind of go into images a little bit because I wanna show you some fun ways that you can create images. Book Creator is amazing for creating images. Uh, but again, we're looking at how you can take some outside stuff and bring it in and produce it in here, okay? So as I'm looking at it, Google, if you're a Google school, Google Drawings is fantastic for creating images directly inside of the G Suite. So you don't have to worry about another login. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, any other external applications or data or anything like that. It's just right there inside of Book Creator for you or inside of Google for you. Uh, and so I took some time and I went in and, oops, I think I am out of it, there we go. Some Google Drawings examples, okay? So Google Drawings is a blank canvas inside of Google, uh, inside of your Google Drive that you can create with and you can have your students create with. But again, one of the things we're looking at is how can we house and collaborate and put all of those things into one area uh, and create that digital portfolio. So to create a new Google drawing, you go to new and then more and then drawings. Awesome, there we go, we can open up a blank one. But one of the things that we're looking at is, well, how can we get creative with it? So I'm gonna show you my crown, crowning jewel. I've got lots of different Google drawings examples in here. Um, you know, that's not really the whole point of the webinar to show you how to do all the things with Google drawings. But this one in particular, this was my little guy who I was just referencing. Uh, when he turned one, uh, we had to have, of course, a big birthday party for him. And so instead of spending uh, 70 or $80 on invitations, uh, I decided I'm gonna make the invitation inside of Google Drawings and then print that out, download it as a JPEG, print it out, or, and then send it to Walgreens and have it printed there. So then we had uh, our invitations for like, $5 because printing four by six images is super cheap here in the States. So I created this um, lots of different lines, boxes, text boxes, all sorts of stuff. But the key element here is changing your page setup 
to a custom set for the size that you want to make. So if you're having your kids make, say, like greeting cards, or they're making birthday invitations, or they're making something you want to print, you know, you want to archive that digitally, but you also want to print it out. So one of the things I like is say, hey, set it to six by three or six by four, and then go up to your file, download it as either a JPEG or a PNG, depending on what your background preference is. And now you have your birthday ticket, you know, in this case, my birthday ticket for my one-year-old's birthday party. I could send it to Walgreens, but the thing is, you know, kids, what do they do? They, you print it out, they take it home, it sits on the refrigerator for how long? Well, however long mom and dad can tolerate it up there, and then it gets thrown away. You know, the odds of it being saved forever aren't great. So what we're looking at is how can we create, you know, in a place where this is stored, for good, you know, and that's gonna be, you just bring it into your book creator. So just like we did videos, we're gonna bring in our image that we made. I'm gonna to go to the plus sign media, import it in, go to files, bring in my birthday ticket. And now I've got that picture that's kind of saved here for all time, you know, and it's digitized. It's never gonna disappear unless they get rid of the book or whatever, but if they download the book, they've got their birthday ticket and they've got that example of what that student made uh, in whatever grade they were in. So really a cool way. Now there's another way you can bring in Google files as well. So Book Creator also connects with your Google Drive. So if I go into media and import, I can go into Google Drive. Do a quick search for the birthday ticket. There it is. And I hit select on that. Actually, that's not what I wanted, but there. That's a quick way to bring it in from my Google Drive. That's actually the saved one um, there. But you can also bring in Drive files as well. Okay, so it's a way that you could bring in um, that project and have it inside of there. You only get a preview of it, but it's still something pretty cool that you can do. All right, we are rapidly running out of time. I just have so much to talk about. That's why I wrote 60 plus pages of it in that book because <laughs> it's so fun. All these things that we can do to bring in and all these different tools. So I'm getting a little redundant here with some of these things. So like Adobe Spark Post, great tool for creating graphics. Okay, so I kind of showcased that uh, earlier with how I made the cover for the book. Um, and as uh, Marcy put in there that Flipgrid's getting an update, uh, Adobe Spark also updated their logo and I have not gotten the new one yet. So I'm actually going to have to talk to Dan about getting a, I'm going to talk to the people at Adobe about getting a new logo to update my book because the logo is now out of date, but all right. So we're going to go into Adobe Spark. This is so fun because you can take things that you make in Adobe Spark and bring them into your book in book creator and you can bring them in in several different ways. So Adobe Spark, I like to call like a content creation machine. So Adobe Spark, you can make, Posts is a, you can make images. Video makes more video. I'm a big fan of video if you can't tell. Uh, and then a page allows you to create web pages. And you can do that all inside of Adobe Spark. Okay. So I'll show you that. Here's my creativity book project. So here's my project in Adobe Spark. Um, I actually set the size of the project before I started to be the size of the book. So I believe I have the book set uh, at uh, landscape 4.3. And so I made sure that when I created my image, I wanted my image to be set at the same size. And that's something you can do when you create the image. So if you are having your kids and they wanna like get creative in Adobe Spark and bring that into their book, setting that image size to be appropriate and be the same size as the page can be super helpful. Okay. Cause then they can just drag and drop it in and it takes up the whole page. They don't have to worry about, you know, pulling it, stretching it, making it look goofy. Um, you know, they can just bring it in in the right way. So you can see here, uh, the reason why I like this is because these are all actually text boxes. So this is a text box on top of a picture of a Chromebook that I took and then blacked out the background, more text boxes, you know, to kind of provide all of the context that I needed. And I could create some new fonts, some different ways of looking at it. And now I have my, you know, Adobe Spark page uh, or post that is able to be downloaded. 
and then upload it into my book. So the image is just the same process as what we did with the Google drawing, download it, pull it in and you're good to go. Okay. Uh, what were the book creator pages for dimensions for an image? So that's going to be what you choose. Good question. Uh, and as far as I see Sharon's, uh, question about up there about Adobe Spark and Canvas. So I'll, I'll answer both of those. So it's going to be what you choose for uh, your book shape. So when you create a book inside of Book Creator, you go to that new book, look for what the shape is and what the ratio is. And then when you create a new project with Spark, custom size graphic, you can see you can change your width and your height, but then also you can go to like standard and you can see like here's square one to one that's going to be square one to one so i can choose my different sizes phone is going to be i think or no portrait here two three that's going to be your portrait two three so you're just going to choose those sizes when you create your project to match up with whatever the size of the book is when you create those books so that's where you're gonna you're gonna do that okay uh, and then sharon asked the differences between spark and canva um, you know, uh, I think Canva allows you to get more granular with your, with your like text inputting. Um, it's a little bit more like text boxy. Like it, it's very, I think it's the steroid version of Google drawings. Um, you know, everything you make in Canva can look better than a Google drawing. I think Adobe comes in with like a little more flash and it creates this really like Adobe like flair to your image, if that makes sense. Uh, where Canva, you, and it does it very easily. Where Canva, I think you have to work a little harder to achieve that same flash. So for students, I think it teaches them a little, some of the elements of graphic design with Adobe without them having to know some of those design elements. Where Canva, they actually have to kind of know those elements to make it kind of, you know, work for itself, if that, if that makes sense. Um, both great products, both free for education as well. So, you know, that's, that's something to, to certainly uh, keep in mind. Yep, absolutely. All right. Um, so that's Adobe Spark post. Um, we've got 10 minutes left. So I want to make sure we get to a couple of more things. Um, inside of here, we, you know, the, I'm not going to worry about the Adobe Spark post uploading because you guys all saw how to do that with, um, you know, with the Google drawing, same process, download and then publish uh, and then pull into your book and book creator or import it in. Um, what I do want to show you is how can you take an Adobe Spark page, okay? So this is an Adobe Spark page and actually I've got a couple in here uh, that are made by students already. So I'm gonna give you a student example here. So this is one that is high school student made, um, Brown versus Board of Education. And when we're making a Spark page, what you're doing is you're making a web page. So this is like a creative modality of like expressing yourself through a web page, um, it takes something that's maybe a written work and make amplifies the creativity on it like tenfold. Uh, you know, I, I like to tell people if you used to do it in a Google Doc, you can do it in a Spark page and it just makes it look so much better. But again, it's a standalone web page with one link. So how can we kind of put that together with something else? We're going to use Book Creator. So this is what it looks like when we're editing a Spark page. Um, very straightforward. My best piece of advice with this is just follow the plus signs. Every time you see a plus sign, that's where it's gonna ask you to add something. And then what does it look like when it's all done? Well, it looks like this. Super cool text, graphics. These are called glide shows. So this is automatically like what I would have asked my kids to do is say, hey, write a paper on Brown versus Board of Education. Well, they could have, but then there's you know, Google Docs that are just boring. So what I can do is say, hey, do this because now we can share this out. I mean, this is just super cool. So what we're gonna look at is how can we then take this and put it into Book Creator? Well, I'm gonna copy the link up here, the published link. I'm gonna go back to my book. I'm gonna find my Spark page, which I think is this one. And this time I'm gonna go to plus sign media import, and I'm gonna go to embed, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna embed the link to my Adobe Spark page. And when I confirm the web link, you can see it gives me a little preview, I give it a title, and now I add it to my book. And now I can make this like a nice preview of 
my Adobe Spark page project and what's it look like when it's now published. So when my book is published, my viewers or my readers can click on it and it gives them this awesome preview window without taking them away from my book of what my Adobe Spark page looked like. So again, here is a cool way for you as teachers that you have all of your kids make an Adobe Spark page on a topic. You want to show them all off, but there's like, you can send out, like you want to send them to your principal because you're so excited, but he's not, or she's not going to want to click on like 30 different links to all this stuff. I would like that more condensed. So what I would do is click, like grab all the links, put them into a book in book creator. You can put the kid's name at the top and the title and then embed that link in. And now they can click through the book and they can click on each one of those pages and it opens it up in a preview panel for them to scroll through. So I really like that idea of like combining all of my kids, you know, Adobe Spark pages into one book in book creator. You know, just a really cool way that your kids can then, they learn a little bit of web design, but then you're in, in creativity and then you combine them all together in book creator or you make them do it, you know, have them make their own book in book creator and then, you know, put it in, collaborate with them. You can share a book out and have them turn on, you can turn on collaboration, have them all there and then they add their slide or their, their spark page into that book in book creator. Um, so lots of different ways that you might, uh, you know, be able to utilize Adobe Spark page and bring it in. Um, yes. So Nancy just had a question. I would be happy to show you that again. This is something that they updated a few you know, months ago and I'm, I'm not, a, I'm still not quite sold on the formatting of their dashboard, but it is what it is. Um, to create a new page, you're going to click on the plus sign in the top left hand corner and then choose web page. Okay. A lot of these are going to be just post. So like flyers, a post Instagram stories, a post, you know, um, collage is obviously a post but then you also have web page and video. So video is the next thing here. How can you then, you know, just one more way to make a video. Honestly, out of all the ways to make video, Adobe Spark video is the easiest. And I don't like to say the word easy because what's easy for me might not be easy for Nancy, it might not be easy for Anne, it might not be easy for Elizabeth. Like, you know, these things are all subjective, right? But this is pretty easy. Um, so I'll show you guys uh, one that I have done. So I used Adobe Spark to actually, um, and as I'm on a webinar talking about all these different tools, I feel like slightly like a hypocrite because this, <laughs> this uh, uh, but I put, a, I put a disclaimer on it, right? So um, one thing that I did is I did this Ignite talk on telling people not to get caught up in the ed tech infomercial. Like don't get sold a bag of goods about something that you're not going to use. But I put that disclaimer out at the beginning of this, right? Like find, basically the point of this Ignite talk was find your purpose and then use the tool, okay? Um, so what this was, was this was me creating, uh, an Ignite talk is when the presenter has 20 slides, they get 15 seconds per slide. And then as the uh, slides tick by, you have to be on point with what you're saying because it's an auto slideshow in the back. So you can't talk for a slide for 30 seconds because it'll already be past two. So I used Adobe Spark Video to practice, and then I made a video out of it. So I have all of my slides in here from my Ignite talk. But then if you can record your voice over top of these slides. So I use the red button to see that I was at that 15 to 16 second mark on each one of the slides that I was going to talk about for my presentation. Um, I used a tool like this uh, before uh, with my kids where they would, uh, you know, take images and then record their voice over top of those images. It was awesome. Kids loved it. Uh, this is a super straightforward tool to be able to utilize. So, you know, definitely something to, to consider using when you want to use video creation, not it's kind of sits in between the world of screencastify and uh, well, I guess it doesn't screen record, so that's not it, but it's a little bit lesser than we video uh, because you don't have all of the editing elements, but you have the ability to create an outstanding video without having to know all of those elements. So I particularly like this and it's free. So that's awesome too. Um, so I'm gonna show you now how I would put this into my book. Two ways, I could download it like we did before, or you can share it. And when you publish it, you actually get a link. So I'm gonna take the link to this, go back into my book 
And instead of having to worry about files and uploading and downloading and all that business, what we're gonna do is, actually gotta go back to the edited version here, go into here, go to the plus sign, media, import again. This time we're gonna use embed again, drop it in, add it to my book, and now my video is not necessarily embedded, but it's linked. So I've lived in this crazy world of ed tech since my second year. So it prevents the, you don't have to worry about the process of your students downloading and then re-uploading. You know, maybe they're on an internet bandwidth, you know, situation where they don't have the bandwidth to download and then re-upload. Just have them share the link, embed the link in the book, and then they're good, you know? So you don't have to worry about that download and then re-upload part. Just put the link in and then it shows up really nice and clean inside of their book. Um, so uh, I'm almost out of time. So I just wanna briefly hit on voice because we didn't get to that. Um, WeVideo does have, if you go to their dashboard, you do have the ability to record just your audio inside of WeVideo. So they've become kind of this podcasting platform. Um, I hit on it earlier, but I wanna you know, not be sure not to leave out Soundtrap. Uh, Soundtrap is a really cool, awesome, full-blown audio editor. Like if you've got those audio files that are just super nerdy about it and, and wanna like look at how they can bring in and mix and match audio, this is for you. And it's, if you can navigate how to video edit in like a Wii video, you can definitely do that inside of Soundtrap. You know, this is a way that I have these audio pieces in here and I can you know, move my playhead over, right click on them, split the region and remove them. And then I think this is one I just recorded my voice over briefly. See how I can just click and drag the different things around. And now I can go in and you can just hear it. And it's gonna start recording my voice. So now I'm recording the first part of my podcast and welcome to it. So you can add in those loops. Um, so I see the question is Soundtrap an extension, is it free? So it's a web app, so it's soundtrap.com. Um, they have a free version. Uh, the free version is pretty good. Um, they wanna encourage everybody to go to Soundtrap for education. Um, you know, that's where they're making sure they're COPA compliant and all that type of stuff. But yeah, they do have a free version. Um, obviously they have a freemium. So like everything, there's a free and a freemium that you can go to, or a freemium version and a premium version that you can go up to. But it is a super cool platform for audio mixing. I've shown this to like band and choir teachers and their brains just explode. And what's neat about this is when you save these tracks, you can download them as MP3 files. So I'm gonna go back over here. I'm in my studio or my projects area and I can click on the three dots, download it. You can see it downloads into my bottom corner here and now I can bring it into my book in Book Creator. So instead of trying to curate all of these different podcasts that my kids do inside of some other tool somewhere, you can have them download them, put them into a book, and then now they've got all of their podcasts in there, all their songs in there, and you can easily publish this out. So I know I'm at five o'clock, so I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Is that awesome jam that I made, right? Um, but I want to just point out that as one kind of last thing. And then of course, we got to culminate with Book Creator, like the end all be all of this whole thing is you can make so many cool things with Book Creator, um, you know, and we just merely scratch the surface of how we bring everything in to Book Creator uh, to help inspire creativity. But if you look at my, I think my book's a pretty good example of, I mean, the possibilities with in inserting video, um, you know, talking about all the different ways you can kind of make this. And then the end result, your kids' books can look like this too. They can publish them out to the web and they can have them be interactive. They can share them with mom and dad. They can flip through them. So, um, you know, without Book Creator, you know, as this way, a place to house all this stuff, you know, it's a little bit difficult to kind of bring everything in together into one. Um, I've got a couple of more webinars coming up this month that I hope you guys join me for, Book Creator in the Social Studies Classroom and then Book Creator in the Elementary Ed Classroom. We're really gonna dive into like how we can utilize Book Creator itself and maximize learning in those types of environments. So while this one was, how can we bring all this stuff together? Um, I really, really like the idea of creating with all this stuff. So 
Um, there, we just got uh, the webinars uh, link in there. Oh, got another question. How to save your book into your own library. Absolutely, I'd be happy to do that again. Um, so what we've done is click on, you're gonna click on the link in my slides here. Um, as far as our, my book, so I don't, I'm not sure if you meant my digital book, this one. This book can't be saved into the library. This book's the published version, so it's not an EPUB file. Um, this is actually the published book, so it can't go into the library. Um, so you're gonna have to, it'll just be the web view of, of my book here. Um, if you were meaning um, my workbook, um, you would download it. Again, click on this link. That will take you to this page here. Going to click the download button either here or here. And when you do that, uh, since I already did it, I won't download it again. It'll download into your downloads folder. And then inside of your library, what you'll do is go to your My Books, best place probably to do it. Click on the uh, book options area and go to import book. And then just upload it from your computer. You can see it is right here and hit open. And just like that, you've got my workbook. So again, that's on slide seven. Um, you know, I, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. I know a lot of you stayed and uh, stuck around. So thank you for that. Thank you for your time, uh, especially uh, I'm sure most of you in the summertime. And uh, reach out if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. And uh, get Book Creator. It's an amazing tool. Uh, it's one that I've been using for eight years. So thank you, everybody. And uh, have a great rest of your day.